Hi, how are you? I hope you're doing great. So today I'm going to explain the carbohydrate metabolism. But before that, you have to master the first video that I uh, recently posted. So uh, I will be explaining you glycolysis, link reaction, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, glycogenesis, glycogenolysis, and finally the pentose phosphate phosphate pathway in addition there is a small portion of about two to, two to three minutes of about lactose metabolism and fructose metabolism i want to explain just one thing that this biochemistry thing is really very easy if you understand the basic concepts initially for the five to ten minutes it will be you know a little heavy but once you understand that for the rest of the time you will start to enjoy all that information all right uh, so let's start today thank you so before I proceed to the uh, glycolysis and link reaction and Krebs cycle, I just want to recap the few basic concepts. The ultimate source of energy for this planet Earth is sunlight. And that sunlight is trapped by the plants in the process called photosynthesis. And in photosynthesis, this carbon dioxide, this carbon dioxide is reduced to food. It is reduced to food here, glucose, and water is oxidized to oxygen. Right, this is glyco this is uh, photosynthesis, and the reverse of this is for respiration that happens in animals and, and and human beings. And see that the food is oxidized, the food is oxidized to carbon dioxide, and oxygen is reduced to water. All right, and in that process, we get about 36 to 38 ATP molecules upon the oxidation of glucose. Here, oxidation is actually the loss of electrons while reduction is the gain of electrons and you can uh, remember this thing oil rig oxidation is loss of electrons while reduction is gain of electrons so more reduced is the substance upon oxidation it produces more energy i mean if there is more reduction of the substance for example if we see that palmitic acid palmitic acid has a lot of hydrogen but only two oxygen only two oxygen atoms all right and so upon oxidation Palmitic acid produces about 129 ATP, while in case of glucose, which is less reduced compared to palmitic acid because it has a lot of oxygen here, right, it produces about 38 ATP compared to that of palmitic acid, it produces 129 ATP. And as I told earlier, if something is oxidized, if something is oxidized, I mean it loses electrons, then other, some other thing is reduced that gains electrons. So why is it important? This is important to understand the whole energy metabolism. Food is oxidized to carbon dioxide and when food is oxidized to carbon dioxide some other thing some other thing has to be reduced and what is that uh, some other thing that is NAD and FAD which are actually the coenzymes NAD, NAD is derived from niacin while uh, FAD is derived from riboflavin right these are the vitamins water soluble vitamins so NAD and FAD are reduced to NADH and FADH2 and in all those pathways for example, glycolysis, link reaction, Krebs cycle, fructose and galactose oxidation, fatty acid oxidation, amino acid oxidation, in summary, all food oxidation. All that food oxidation produces NADH. I mean, all that food oxidation reduces NAD to NADH. And now this NADH has to be oxidized back to NAD. And once this is oxidized back to NAD, it has to lose electrons because oxidation is loss of electrons so it will lose electrons and those electrons will be gained by oxygen and oxygen will be reduced to water and once this oxidation happens here in the electron transport chain oxidation of NADH and FADH happens in electron transport chain oxygen and oxidation oxygen is reduced to water we get ATP and this is the ultimate source of energy uh, uh, ultimate source of energy production in the cell and that is electron transport chain all right so this is this is all the story i mean if you, you see that food is oxidized to carbon dioxide nad and fad are reduced to nadh and fadh2 and when nadh and fadh2 are oxidized back to nad and fad they reduce oxygen to water and in that process we get atp during electron transport chain so so now we see how those concepts relate in the real cell you say that cell in the cell there is cytoplasm and the major pathway that is happening in the cytoplasm is glycolysis and glycolysis as i told earlier it's oxidation of glucose to pyruvate oxidation of glucose to pyruvate is called glycolysis 
Uh, you see that glucose has six carbons, while pyruvate has three carbons. So actually, one glucose molecule produces two pyruvate. So we get two pyruvate when glucose is oxidized to pyruvate. And in that process, NAD is reduced to NADH. Two NAD are reduced to two NADH, while two ADP are phosphorylated to two ATP. So the net product of glycolysis is two NADH, two ATP, and two pyruvate. We will study that in a while. And then this pyruvate enters into the into the mitochondria. And in the mitochondria, this pyruvate is oxidized to acetyl CoA. So two pyruvate are entering into the mitochondria. So two acetyl CoA will be produced in the mitochondria from one glucose molecule. So two pyruvate when are oxidized to acetyl CoA, so we get two carbon dioxide. And similarly, we get two we, we get two NADH from two NAD. Here I want to emphasize. You see, there are three carbons. Pyruvate has three carbons. So acetyl CoA has two carbons. So one carbon actually goes to carbon dioxide. So as there are two pyruvates entering in here, so we'll get two carbon dioxide from two pyruvate and definitely we will get two acetyl CoA. And the net product of link reaction is two NADH. All right, so clear here from up till now. So move forward. Now this acetyl CoA, this acetyl CoA enters into Krebs cycle. And once this enters into the Krebs cycle, we get from these two carbon, two acetyl CoA, we get four carbon dioxide. So all this acetyl CoA actually goes to carbon dioxide because two acetyl CoA will produce four carbon dioxide. One acetyl CoA will produce two carbon dioxide. And once this oxidation happens in Krebs cycle, we get four NADH, four, two FADH2, and two GTP. So this is the summary of Krebs cycle. So like the whole product of Krebs cycle is six NADH, two FADH2, and two GTP. And note here, this we are talking about two acetyl CoA. When two acetyl CoA enters into Krebs cycle, we get six NADH, two FADH2, and two GTP. And now you can calculate what will happen if one acetyl CoA is oxidized in Krebs cycle. Like we'll get three NADH, one FADH2, and one GTP. So this is how the glucose first is oxidized to pyruvate, that pyruvate is oxidized to acetyl CoA, and then acetyl CoA enters into the Krebs cycle to make carbon dioxide. And in whole that process, what did we get? We got 10 NADH, we got 2 FADH2, and we got 2 ATP, these ATP from glycolysis, and we got 2 GTP from Krebs cycle. So total we got this product. And here I just want to emphasize one thing that when one NADH is oxidized in electron transport chain, it it produces three ATP, approximately three ATP, while when one FADH2 is oxidized in electron transport chain, it produces two ATP. So we got two FAD, we got two FADH2. When they are, these are oxidized to two FAD, we get four ATP. And 10 NADH, so 10 NADH will, go, going, will be going to produce 30 ATP. Two ATP from glycolysis, two GTP from Krebs cycle. So the total, we got 38 ATP. So this is the whole summary of the energy metabolism. I hope. Uh, this is clear. Please spend some time over this video and this will be clear.